So I don't think any work of art is ever really truly original. We're all inspired by something. In fact, we're all usually inspired by like a vast amalgamation of somethings. Like so many somethings that we don't even realize that we're being inspired. That we've just consumed so much media and art and content and poetry and songs and just all of this stuff that percolates in our brains that enables us to like come up with these really unique cool ideas and that is inspiration it's not something you have to be ashamed about and in fact deliberately cultivating inspiration trying to find more stuff that excites you that you're passionate about that inspires you to create that's amazing it can help refill that well of creativity and spark new ideas so in this video i want to talk about what i'm personally inspired by as an artist with the hopes that maybe it'll push you to create something new today So maybe this is just me, but I personally would far prefer to be interesting than original. And the benefit of living in the modern era is that there are literal millennia worth of art to draw inspiration from. And instead of shying away from this vast library of cr creativity, I prefer to lean into it. I love browsing art books, taking notes, making master copies and master studies, and just being really inspired by all of the art around me and literally copying their technique to learn something. And over the past couple of weeks, I've been drawing a lot of inspiration from three art books in particular, Richard Schmidt's Landscape Collection, A History of American Tonalism by David Cleveland, and Women Impressionists, specifically the Berta Morisot section, which is an exhibition book by the Fine Art Museum of San Francisco. These books are fantastic. The American Tonalism one is like a murder weapon of a book. It is so heavy. It's an amazing work of scholarship, but I'm mostly in it for the pictures personally. And I decided that I wanted to make a piece that was really inspired by all three of these. I picked up this reference photo from ArtStation and kind of ran with it. I'm using colors that are typical in a tonalist palette for this painting, so kind of muted, more atmospheric colors. Specifically, I'm using a lot of Vasari colors in this painting. Fringe anthracite gray for the darks, jasper and cedar for the greens that we'll see later on. And for this underpainting, I'm using ship rock, which is uh, like a, a nice creamy yellowish beige color that I personally found really amazing to work with. So I'm just blocking in the rocks here, just getting started with this painting. We'll be doing tons of work on this painting. This is secretly a painting time-lapse video. Oh, psych. <laughs> I really sincerely believe that originality is intensely overrated in the art community. So many people bend over backwards in an effort to be original, but forget to be really interesting and forget that it's totally okay to heavily draw inspiration from a variety of sources as long as you kind of make it your own, you know what I mean? And I don't think that you need to reinvent the wheel when it comes to painting and drawing. I think it's actually very challenging and incredibly educational to make master copies and study the technique of artists that came before you, and there is nothing wrong with that. That is how the masters learned painting. That is how you can learn painting. Do you really think that you're going to be better than Michelangelo and Caravaggio? Do you really think that they didn't trace and do master copies and stuff too. I mean, I'm pretty sure that Johann Vermeer literally like invented tracing, right? Or was that Jan van Eyck? I'm not sure. But the point is more so that it's fine to take inspiration, even heavily take inspiration from the world around you, from art history, from everywhere. So instead of trying to make some like contrived argument in favor of originality, of sequestering yourself into, I don't know, some kind of cave and be a little art monk and never look at anything or enjoy anything ever again. I more so want to talk about inspiration, where personally I find inspiration and how I work with it as a painter. So for me as a landscape painter, Art history and nature are the two things that tend to spark my interest more than anything else. So I like to make a deliberate effort to go out hiking, to walk the foggy streets of San Francisco at night after a concert, and to say yes to that 14 mile hike with my boyfriend even though I know I'm going to be sore after, and to buy art history books and monographs on particular artists and art movements that catch my eye so I can study them and really learn something. As I said before, my favorite art books right now are that Richard Schmid Landscape Collection book, American Tonalism by David Cleveland, which is kind of an obscure art movement that followed after Impressionism that really relies heavily on 
a strong sense of atmosphere, like painting the air and the weather and just very nostalgic and like evocative, like picture a 3 a.m. painting scene on a like, you know, a foggy Vermont morning when you can see like the barn and the fields and stuff like that, that kind of thing when the world feels really quiet. I think that's what tonalism is really about as far as I know. And Bert Morisot. So Bert Morisot was one of a couple, really only a handful of women impressionists um, that really held their own and exhibited with people like Monet. And her work is phenomenal. It has entranced me for ages. As soon as I really became a fan of her work, I knew appreciating it would never be enough. You know what I mean? I had to pick it apart and put it together again and try to emulate it to really like understand how she did what she did and the colors that she picked and like how she decided to do all of these interesting things with her paintings because her style is very unique among other impressionists. I'm really curious as to what she was inspired by as a painter and I can't wait to read more of like the actual words in this in this book about her and not like just look at the pictures which are incredible but she has this really soft dreamlike fairy tale-esque kind of quality to her artwork that I really wanted to draw on for this piece. So I use that initial layer to kind of do all of my sketching and put in my values and stuff. I'm using spike oil for that part, which is like a solvent. And now I'm really diluting my paints with safflower oil, which is like a nice kind of pale oil that really makes my paints a little bit creamier. And I can tell that that's how Berth so painted her stuff because there's that very clear watercolory almost effect to her underpaintings that bleeds through the like later successive thicker paint layers and it's really interesting to analyze art like that and really try and pick out lessons that you can use in your own paintings so I'm doing that for part of this painting and I'm also really heavily leaning into kind of the dramatic, atmospheric kind of sense of time and place that the tonalists would have really loved. And also Richard Schmid had a big impact on this piece too, but I mean, obviously I'm not nearly as talented as Richard Schmid and I, you know, hope to someday be, but it seems like almost a, a fruitless endeavor to even try and like master what he was able to do with paint. And Richard Schmid unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago, but he was an American realist painter that really liked to walk the fine line between like real and somehow still like loose and painterly. His paintings are just gorgeous. If you ever have a chance to look at his work online, I would highly recommend it. So I'm really inspired by art history. I'm really inspired by nature. I, I really think that if you want to cultivate a good sense of motivation and inspiration as an artist, if you want to come up with like new and original ideas, you have to like just consume content and art and film and song and poetry and novels and say yes to new experiences because all of that feeds into that creative well of inspiration that you draw from every time you pick up a pencil or a brush and that feeling of the world like having shifted on its axis after you step out of the theater after watching a really good film that just like feeling of being adrift and somehow so hungry and just like itching to create that to me is what inspiration really is that feeling of like having art really speak to you in a strong way like that is phenomenal and you should never deprive yourself of that you should cultivate it you should seek it out deliberately and you should take notes when you feel that way so that you can revisit that feeling back in the studio and make something amazing the best way to really find inspiration and to make something even remotely kind of original-ish for you is to immerse yourself in the world, in your life, in the art community, and to always be on the hunt for new things to learn and to collect the stuff that makes you feel alive. Some people define originality as like a thing that never existed before, that kind of sprung out of nothing, inspired by nothing, just exists and is entirely new and alien. And I think that just like is so impossible to reach and impossible to achieve that it's not even worth like striving toward. Instead of being quote unquote original in that way, I would urge you to be interesting instead, to cleverly steal from artists all around you and to kind of just 
mash it all together into something unique to you and to let all of those experiences and all that inspiration inform your process as a painter so that you can make something really amazing. But don't worry about it being original. I think originality is a useless concept. Just make something good. Make something fun. Make something that you personally want to see more of in the world and let that guide you and not this feeling of, oh my god, I can't have art hanging above my walls or I can't like look at other paintings while I'm working on this piece or fear that it influences me too much. That is a valid concern for some people, but I think it's far more useful to just let all of that guide you and to help you find your own voice as an artist and to not worry about feeling inspired and to not worry about drawing a little bit too much inspiration from an artist here or there as long as you're not literally copying their paintings like you're fine who cares if the way that you outlined that rock as i did a couple minutes ago is very bert so of you or the way that you're mixing your colors is oh my god that's too richard schmidt like no i don't care i i should hope that those artists look down on me from wherever they are and feel, you know, that I was inspired by them. That, to me, is the greatest compliment as an artist. I should hope that someone's inspired by me to make something cool and amazing. And I don't care if, oh, they stole that particular color from me. I couldn't, I couldn't give less of a single solitary fuck. The most important thing to me is that you make interesting and cool art. And if that means that you take three artists and their styles and you merge that together and put it through your own voice and a reference photo, you make something co totally unique, but like clearly has tiebacks to all of those three forms of all of those three pieces of inspiration. Like good for you. That's awesome. So that's really what I wanted to talk about. I think that originality in art is something that people just spend too much time talking about. Like it's not that deep. Just make stuff make stuff. You need to make art more than you talk about it, more than you worry about it. You need to make stuff and you'll figure everything out later. I promise. It's not that deep. Your relationship with your art can be complex. It can be easy. It can be whatever you want. But if you do want sustained inspiration as an artist, if you do want to feel consistently inspired to make cool stuff, to make amazing stuff, you need to just absorb content and art and poetry and novels with a voracious appetite and that will feed your creativity more than worrying about originality ever will. So I hope you enjoyed this painting, by the way. This painting is very much a mishmash of all of the stuff that I was talking about. It's really heavily inspired by like a half a dozen different people and I had a blast working on this. I'm so proud of the way these rocks came together. I am normally not a rock kind of painter, um, very insecure about painting rocks, did not like them, but I had a blast with this piece. It was really an example of me confronting one of my like creative weaknesses and trying to turn into a strength, and I think these really strong shadows to me are so evocative. I love the contrast in this piece, and I hope that you enjoyed seeing me make it. So. That's all I wanted to talk about for this one. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.